Time for Talking Pints. It really, really is. And my guest tonight, Andrew Maguire, is a former commodities trader. So we've sort of come from very similar backgrounds. Now, Andrew, your obsession with precious metals began as a teenager. It certainly did. Um, in fact, at 12 years old, uh, I used to go to auctions and literally buy any old scrapped piece of, 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 of silver. And, and of course, you know, collected all this stuff and, and, and the family thought it was crazy. But actually, you know what? It turned out to be a really, really good investment. <laughs> and, uh, and, I've, and I've loved, silver has been something, a passion I've had for silver for many, many years. It's always been a currency throughout history. Sterling. Sterling, sterling. absolutely. You know, sterling, uh, yeah, yeah. And a benchmark. And it used to be a benchmark uh, for the pound. And, and of course, then, uh, yes, but that evolved to um, gold, of course. And the, the, the gold and silver are joined at the hip, uh, so to speak. And, and of course, gold is um, more view, is viewed really by governments, central banks as an asset. Well, we're going to talk about the history of gold in a yeah. moment. I mean, I got involved with silver as a teenager. I think I was 16, 17. When I first got involved, I became, I worked on the London Metal Exchange. You were a, a bullion dealer. So our backgrounds are very, very similar. But it's important to explain to people just how important gold was. It was the same thing as money up until 1971. Just give us a quick take on that. Yep, up until 1971. Um, it really, uh, gold... Basically, create you had to. It created a discipline. It created a discipline on governments where you couldn't just um, create money. It would be you know, your money was backed by gold. Yeah. Now, if we go all the way back to if I was if I was in in 1200 and and I was in Warwick Castle and I wanted to invade uh, the castle in Kenilworth, I would go down to my um, to the vaults and I would count how many gold coins I had because that is the limit as to how whether I could actually go to war or not. Or, in fact, if I did run out, they might turn, they may pay them to come back on me. So, basically, gold has always been... It provided discipline to... But then, but then President Nixon... President broke, Nixon... ...broke in, the link between the dollar and gold, which, as I see it, allowed, allowed governments to create what we call fiat money, yes. allowed governments to start creating money, which has led to, well, not for the whole of the time, but a long period of inflation, a long period of monetary devaluation, which we're back into again today. Absolutely full circle. And I think what happened was the minute that he depegged gold uh, from um, the, the, the gold from the dollar, essentially, as you say, fiat currencies. What is a fiat currency? People know it, it is simply the pound or the dollar that you hold in your hand. What is it backed by? It's backed by faith in the Confidence, government. Confidence. That's what they tell us. Absolutely. So. So do you have... This is the question I ask people. Do you have confidence in this £20 note? See, I'm told by the Bank of England that all cryptocurrencies are utterly valueless, but then I, I, I look at the existing money and I begin to ask, not quite the same, but similar questions. Andrew, you worked in this market, buying and selling gold. Yep. Governments, even though money is not pegged directly to gold, governments hold reserves of gold. Mm -hmm. But we had a Chancellor who took over in 1997, Gordon, the great Gordon Brown, who told us that gold was a barbarous relic, yeah. that its time had gone, and then proceeded to sell 400 metric tonnes of our gold reserves in the Bank of England at an average price of about $270 it an was. ounce. It was. And it's now $1,800 an ounce. Uh, what was he thinking? Yeah, well, in, in pound terms, it's fourteen hundred and fifty pounds, so eighteen hundred yeah. dollars in dollars, yeah. of course. So, so apples to apples. What was he thinking? Is absolutely right, and um, and I think really at that point there, um, what it really sent us down uh, a road of money printing and uh, debasement, currency debasement, and I think so. Really, gold is as you've just started out by saying, gold is money. Everything else is credit. Mm. Everything else is really, and then we're talking about debt-based systems here. We're talking about how, how is in, I mean, if you have your £20 note and you put it into the bank, number one, you've just loaned that to the bank. People don't realise that, but that is actually, is, it, you, it is in yeah. your name. Yeah. But, but, and they can fractionalise that and lend it out. But the thing is, this, it's depreciating. 
And what's the current rate of uh, inflation in this country? 10% they claim? Actually, if you go down the grocery store, yeah. I don't think it's 10%. It's yeah. more like 20 it, And most people will just say, well, look at my current, my, my basket mm. has not cost me just 10% more. Mm. So, so really, when I say to people say to me, well, look, yes, well, I've got cash in the bank. I, I, you know, it's a bit of a risky environment right now. We're talking about governments. And money's mm -hmm. safe. My, yeah. But money's devaluing. I know, I know. And that's yeah. going to catch up with people as it did in the 70s. Yeah. But within the gold market and within yeah. this relationship with central banks, yeah. with governments, yeah. with the markets, I mean, you've been a bit of a whistleblower. You've, you've, you believe there's great corruption that exists there. We've proved it, uh, Nigel. And, and uh, back in 2008... I, I uncovered um, a, 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 a really a scheme uh, by th our two big to fail banks had colluded, and it was called a conspiracy theory at the time. Had colluded to rig the price of precious metal. Now we're talking about um, a, a market, and believe it or not, if you add in all of the paper derivatives that surround a piece of physical gold, you're talking about literally seventy trillion. I mean, a trillion. Yeah, Forget yeah, it. You yeah, know, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, guys. You know, because it, you, you, I can't even imagine <laughs> it. But but anyway, you're talking about a market that 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 is that big. So, so basically, what happened was we uncovered a scheme where they would set the price of gold at a certain at the fixed point. There's a certain point in the day where you fix the price in of the gold. In the morning in London. The in London. Fix, yep. at Eleven o'clock. Uh, yep. Ten o'clock in the morning in London and three p.m. in the afternoon. Now the whole world, the whole globe, fixes their gold price to yep. that price. Yep. Central banks do. Bullion dealers. Everyone across the world. And you're talking about a massive market here, big, as big as oil. So essentially, uh, if you can rig that price and you know, it's like a bit like saying, uh, uh, you know. This horse is going to be win this race. Very useful. Absolutely very useful. So really, it's a no brainer that you will, will mm. actually make money. So what I, I did was uncover the scheme, which then we then reported it to the, the CFTC, which is the uh, Commodity Futures Trading, uh, trading uh, uh, Regulators. Yeah. Yeah. We reported it to the Demar Department of Justice in America. Subsequently, we reported to uh, Andrew Bailey when he was head of the uh, FCA. Bank yeah. of, uh, of the FCA. Um, but essentially, we proved that they were rigging the markets. We gave them 88 examples of where the price would fix the next day. We did that through lawyers so that we would timestamp the day before and say, here's the email, uh, share it with the CFTC, share it with the DOJ, here's where the price of gold would be. Do you believe there's been a willful attempt it was. to keep the price of gold low? It was a willful attempt to, pre to, to not just keep the price of gold low, but as an insider game to make money. Mm. Yeah, well, corruption can exist in many, many forms. But looking at where we are today, hmm. you make the point hmm. that, you know, being safe with your money and having it in the bank, and, hmm. I, and I get the mentality, um, yeah, you're losing 10% a year or maybe a little bit more at this current moment in time. This programme is not here to give investment advice, and no. we're not giving no. investment advice, but I'm asking you, Andrew Maguire, your personal opinion of what you think gold does from here. Right. So your alternative, stay in cash, put it in the bank and you lose 10 percent. That is an investment decision. You don't think that you get this lovely, warm and fuzzy feeling between your ears. It's safe. It's in the bank. No, you are losing 10 percent minimum. Gold is a 5000 year old currency. It has never lost any value. It'll buy you today what it bought 5000 years ago. And with, there's so much evidence of that. If you were a Roman legion, you could buy... The, the, the your, buying your, power of gold. The yeah. buying power of gold yeah. has never eroded. Yeah. In fact, fiat currencies, really, you look at gold as the, as the shore and fiat currencies as the, the moving item. So people say, well, but isn't gold the first thing that people say? Isn't, this, it has to be addressed. Uh, so is, uh, is, is gold <clears throat> volatile? Well, if you look at it on a day to day basis, yes, every currency and gold is a commodity, but it's also a currency mm. It's one of the few. There's only two or four real currency, uh, four real commodities that trade on the on the exchanges as a foreign exchange cross as if it was uh, pound dollar. It is gold dollar. It's gold pound. Yep. It's a, it trades as a foreign exchange cross. So it is a currency. So longer term, medium term, not 
short-term punting for the next 24 hours, yeah. you believe it's the, it's the right place to be. Yeah, so if you just take 2008, you look at take that as a benchmark, and you say, OK, where has gold in pound yeah. terms? It's gone 360% higher as of today. It's been, uh, yeah. I the pound... Say is down yeah. 39%. Yeah, if you've been in gold for the last 20 years, it's been a great place to be. Yeah. Andrew McGuire, people like him, we used to call gold bugs, <laughs> and he's a proper gold bug. And I thank you for joining me. With a very short history of, the, a very short history of gold, but very valuable too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.